Hi all, and welcome back to another Junicorn prompt. So for this Junicorn prompt week, I had requested my patrons to pick from a list of prompts related to environments. So I chose tundra, desert, and uh, underwater, and they ended up picking tundra. So I decided to create a tundra unicorn. Uh, at the same time as I was starting this illustration, my beam paints came in, uh, B-E-A-M. You can see my little note there beside my uh, paper. I had ordered them online, uh, I want to say maybe a few days to a week prior. They showed up pretty quick, but they're also located uh, on Manitoulin Island, and that's not too far for me postage-wise. Uh, so I thought I'd tell you a little bit about the paints while I started the illustration, uh, and then uh, I'd tell you a little bit about the illustration once I was done with that. I thought that was a good format. So the Beam Paints Company is an indigenous women's company, um, and it's owned by uh, two women who live in the Chigging Nation, First Nations uh, settlement in on Manitoulin Island, and uh, that's in Ontario in Canada or Turtle Island. Um, the paint set I ordered from them was the Tasty set, uh, and that had four pigments in it, uh, which was Mayan Rose Gold, Silver, Violet Earth, and Wild Rose. When I ordered them, I was very excited and I thought they were watercolors. They're actually gouache, uh, which is perfectly fine. They, they're beautiful and they work great, but you'll see later on in this illustration, because I didn't realize they were gouache at first, I made some mistakes. <laughs> um, but they're all beautiful. And you can see I have a fifth color there, and when they sent me my shipment, they sent me actually a sample of their Robin's Egg Blue set. Uh, set pigment. <laughs> uh, so they do paint stones like this, as well as uh, palettes, which you can buy, and the palettes come with the paint inside of a wooden um, cross section, half circle out of a trunk. Uh, it's like recycled cedar and uh, I want to say pine as well. Uh, no, birch. I have my little sheet here. <laughs> uh, but I got the paint stone set. I thought those were useful. I don't really need more full-size palettes. Um, and a really nice thing I liked about this company was that they basically do all their packaging in a way that's uh, not wasteful. It's either biodegradable, reusable, or sustainably sourced. So the paints themselves are made with Manitoulin honey, uh, tree sap, uh, Manitoulin stone, and light fast pigments. And then they wrapped everything in um, wax wrappers. So it's like the fabric that you wax with beeswax from the same Manitoulin bees that make the honey. And they also printed all of the, like they came wrapped up in another piece of wax paper. All of that was printed with plant-based inks, which is pretty cool. And, and like I said, they have palettes as well that reuse like uh, birch and white cedar, which is kind of neat. Um, they have on their website tons of pigments. They have liquid watercolors, they have inks. They're all beautiful. I love all of them. I'm excited to buy more. And as far as a handmade paint goes, I think they're fairly well priced. Um, if you haven't bought handmade paints before, it might be a little bit um, steep looking compared to things like a Koi watercolor set, which is my cheap set that I usually use. Um, but I, for a handmade paint, they're, they're great, but really well priced. Um, in any case, yeah, so if you want to check them out, it's B-E-A-M paints all together, uh, like .com, and you can find their website there and find all the store stuff. They have the items listed both with their English names and with Ojibwe names, um, but whichever way you search, you'll find those. So if you want to buy the same palette, it's the Tasty palette. And now that I have gushed about the new paints I got, which I love, uh, I've also used them like since this painting and after I realized they were gouache and I've had much better success not doing everything wrong. <laughs> But uh, as far as this unicorn goes, the tundra prompt made me want to do a few different things. And to start with, I tried doing just like a fluffy unicorn, which works, but wasn't really what I was after. Um, it was too simple, too straightforward. And while that's fun, sometimes this wasn't really what I wanted. It's a prompt series. I want to do something more interesting with it. Uh, so instead, I started to design it based off of a bison. And with that design, I basically wanted to kind of corner in on the really big fur uh, cape or mane that bison have. So they have like that really big, strong shoulder and a low base, uh, a low sitting head, and then this big furry um, collar almost around all of that to make a big, like a lion's mane. 
I think that's a good way to describe it. But when I tried drawing that, I basically lost the unicorn shape. It looked sort of like a rhino sometimes, and other sketches looked like just a weird blob with a horn sticking out of it. Uh, so then I tried to combine the two different um, ideas into one. So I elongated the neck and incorporated more um, more northern ungulate style uh, traits like cloven hoofs, a short round face, like that. they're not big long horse faces, like it's short, uh, like you'd see in caribou or bison, and um, extra fur, fluffy tail, and then to make it look a little bit different, I did give it like an elongated neck, and then I covered that in a thick layer of fur. Um, I also decided to kind of do this resting pose because of the long neck. I didn't think I'd be able to fit everything comfortably without either having to cut something off or having to squash it down. So I like this resting pose so I could kind of cut out the length of the legs as an issue. Um, I also decided, I mean, basically I knew as soon as I got the paints, because I got them I think like a day before I decided to do the painting, that I was going to be using them primarily for the colors. Um, but I still, it still worked out because I wanted this Tundra unicorn to fit in with the type of uh, life that lives in the Tundra and up north. So I gave it this, you know, like the earthy brown colors and I wanted it to have these um, really simple patterns, nothing too elaborate. Uh, because again, that's not really necessary. So, you know, for an animal that lives up north, they just need to be warm. That's the main issue is be warm. Um, so you see here, you've probably watched me layering up this paint. This is when I had started to, I was layering it up while I was wet. I wasn't painting fast enough. I didn't thin the paint out enough. There was a number of issues that I basically caused myself. <laughs> so any patchiness from this is not the paint's fault. It's my fault and like my poor application. But what will you do? Um, I did really enjoy though this color. Like that it's primarily the uh, violet earth. But I did mix in a little bit of the Mayan rose gold. Because it had this really nice rich reddish brown um, color to it. And then... I found together they made this like nice earthy um, sort of moose. Well, I guess moose were a little more gray, but in any case, a, a nice earthy reddish brown color that I thought looked like it fit the care like the creature. Uh, I also tried to go in with that wild rose to give the face more pink colors because I wanted it to look like the fur on the face was really short, uh, which is another trait that you can see in like uh, compared to the rest of the body, caribou, etc. Because uh, they'll be sticking their face through the snow to get at young shoots or old grass, things like that. And so it's easier to keep from building up icicles all through your fur if you're, if it's the short fur on your face and the heat from your face can melt it off. So that short fur I thought looked... I wanted to keep that look to it so it didn't uh, just blend in with the rest of the long fur. I think here I added even more of the violet on top. I was trying to also get some differentiation between... Uh, the top of the animal versus the bottom, so um, like the belly would be an almost white color and then build up to more darker shades up on top, so that was another reason I was layering on as well. I, that's what I wanted to do originally anyways. Whether it gotten patchy or not was to kind of keep building up layers so I'd have this gradation between the really dark back and then the white belly, but I think at this point I realized that working it anymore was just going to ruin it and, <laughs> and keep pulling up pigment underneath because I wasn't waiting for it to fully dry in between applications because I'm impatient and I like to do things fast and I'm used to drawing really really tiny which means everything dries stupid fast it's not hard to do layering that way but with this one they're bigger than I'm used to it takes time I need to step away uh, so then I had decided basically as soon as I found the sample in the pack um, because I think I, I basically swatched the colors and looked through everything and I saw this robin's egg blue and I thought that looks almost like ice, like glacier ice. So I thought it'd be really nice to put that into the horn and have the horn almost look like a big shard of ice sticking out of its head. Although now that I've said that sentence out loud, it's extremely gruesome, but you get what I mean. So I started out sort of light and um, I did sort of a, a wet to wet technique. So you see here I kind of go into the horn with just straight water to kind of gradient it out. Um, and then 
I picked up some of the pigment because it was a little too dark. And you can do that with your brush. As long as your paint is wet, you can kind of go in and pick it back up again. Uh, and then you see here I'm just trying to gently coax this into becoming a nice gradient for me to layer up on top of. And basically, I had to just wait till it was dry at that point. And I think it, for the horn, I'd realized that I needed to let it dry or I was just going to ruin <laughs> so here, yeah, I was going back and just picking up a little bit more of the pigment because it was encroaching a little bit faster. And then I realized as I was doing that, oh, I could probably take this really cool little stripe out because it's uh, not quite wet enough to just fill back in again and not quite dry enough to not be able to be lifted. So I did this, like, white stripe all the way up that I thought looked kind of cool. And I think later on I layered uh, silver over top of it, so it was pretty neat. Uh, and then now, basically, I had to let it dry. Uh, so, I'm going back in now with details, and basically from this point on, it's just all the little fiddly bits that make it more fun. So, I'm going to let you just watch me paint for a while with some too mellow in behind me. I hope you enjoyed watching me paint. Um, I basically chose a nice little simple background of a little mountain to go in behind my tundra unicorn, but all in all, despite my issues with screwing up the paint a bunch, <laughs> I still enjoyed doing this illustration. I really enjoyed the planning of it, I liked the design of it, I liked all the little details I added in. I really love the horn, and then there's that silver which is so sparkly. Anyways, I, I hope you enjoyed it, because I did. Thanks. Talk to you later. Bye!